and you can just click continue if you're all right with that. Well, welcome to RBC at Home. My name is Kim Goff and I'm a learning program developer at the Royal BC Museum. I'm coming to you today from my office, which is located on the traditional territories of the Lekwungen people in Victoria, British Columbia. And I extend my appreciation for the opportunity to both live and to learn on this territory. And because of today's topic, I've been thinking about the importance of the Lekwungen language for understanding and connecting to this place. And I raise my hands to the language keepers and learners who are working to keep that language and connection alive. And I encourage all of you watching today to consider the traditional territories of whose land you are on right now, wherever you are. I do know we have some students joining us from the Kwamichin School and Queen Margaret School who are watching. So I encourage you to also think of uh, the territories of where you are today. RPCM at Home started a year ago when our museum and archive was closed due to the pandemic. It was an opportunity to talk to staff about what they were working on from home. And now that even though the museum is reopened, we've continued this program as a way of staying connected with people at home or school around the province. This program and previous ones have been recorded and you can find them on the Royal BC Museum's YouTube channel. Now, Hokaninam is a Coast Salish language spoken by nations on the east coast of Vancouver Island. It is the language that Elder Steedham Avalich grew up speaking in her Cowichan community. This occurred despite the fact that she had been forced to attend an Indian day school where she was frequently punished for speaking Hokaninam. For 70 years, Steedham Otto Uch mentored hundreds of students and teachers and helped thousands of people develop a basic knowledge of the Hokaninam language. What was said to me, the life of Steedham Otto Uch, a Cowichan woman, is by Ruby Peter in collaboration with Helena Demiers, and it is being released on June 18th. Sadly, Ruby Peter passed away in January of 2021, but today we are very happy to be joined by her daughters, Molly Peter, Adele Joe, and Bernadette Sam, or Little Ruby, and author Helena Demiers to talk about the life of this respected elder and language champion. Welcome all of you. So happy you're here. I'd like to begin by asking you to please tell us about your mother and what you would like people to know about her. Molly, can we begin with you? Yes, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much for inviting our family to participate in such a, such a memorable occasion for our mother. Um, our mother was very kind, loving, gentle. She really pushed each and every one of her children along with her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren, you know, the importance of education, the mm -hmm. importance of learning, the importance of being humble. And always for all of us, she always said to grasp our culture, to hold on to it and to really hang on to our language and to really encourage our children and our grandchildren and generations to come to never ever let it go to, you know, all the teachings that she shared with each of us, she always said, it's not for us to keep, it's for us to pass on to our offspring and to our generations and to the people in the community. She, many times she told us over and over that the importance of helping people and walking with them, not walking ahead of them, but walking with them mm -hmm. and to really grasp and hold hand in hand to teach and to always remember to keep our hearts open for us to make sure that we're always learning on a daily basis. And, you know, we're very fortunate, you know, we're very, very lucky and we're very honored that each of us had our mom for such a long time. She was 88 years when she passed on earlier this year. And, you know, one of the things is that she shared with us that the importance of to, to really remember how she lived not that she's gone, to always remember how she lived and how she taught us, how she walked with us, how she provided for us and provided the teachings. And, it, you know, one of the things is I think about in, in talking with her and her siblings, how they kept their parents alive. They talked about the memories and it was like when I listened to them and, and heard them talk, it was like they just seen our granny and our grandpa just yesterday or just last week, 
you know, they, even though it was, you know, like at that time, it was 27 years of them passing. But whenever we got together, I was just so surprised. And it was just so heartwarming. And it was, it was a real true lesson for me to always remember to really keep our, our loved ones alive and to always cherish and treasure the gifts that they provided us. So I was able to witness, you know, I was able to listen to my mom, our mom and our uncles and our aunts, how they talked about their parents and, you know, to really realize. And I said to mom, when we were riding around one time, I said, geez, mom, you know, the way you talk about granny was like, you just seen her you know, you just seen her yesterday, or we just left her house, and she'd just laugh, and she would say, Mana, it's up to us to keep them alive, we're the ones that have to work, and that's what she did, she touched her chest, and touched her heart, and she said, this is where we have to hold it, we have to hold it in our hearts, and that way, we'll keep them alive, and they're always going to walk with us, but we have to allow it, so I, and our mom was such an inspiration, you know, she, she had so much dedication and devotion, not only to her children, not only to her family, but to community members and her students. And that was one of the things that she had was her pride and joy of being able to take a picture of, of her daughter, her granddaughter, her great granddaughter, and herself of, you know, being able to go to Simon Fraser and have that opportunity. And she was just so proud, you know, it was something that really gave her life, you know, and one of the things is that, you know, mom really taught each of each of us, she taught us how important education is, and how important it was to be able to give and to not only give, but to receive, you know, open our hands and receive the teachings as, as she had done. And she talked, you know, she talked about her book and, you know, for many years, it was, it was just talking about it. And now to see it, see it finally become a reality for her. It's so heartwarming for that. And it brings so much happiness and joy to our family to be able to say that's our mom. Mm -hmm. And I will pass it on. <laughs> Adele? No, I forgot what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could either share a favorite memory of your mom or tell us more about how she lived. Oh, her humor was, uh, her humor was so splendid that every time we always got together, it was, she always shared good memories of humor and even humor, just anything she would just make it all happy and everything and just being around her and all the time and going on going on trips was, you know, the, we, with quality time with mom was always the best. With any time we went on a trip was a lot of fun. And, mm -hmm. you know, she spoke highly of every every member of the family. And like sister was saying, all the, you know, not just the family, the community as well. And, her book and you know us sharing her, about her book and everybody starting to say when's your mom's book coming out i'm gonna buy a book i'm gonna buy a book so and then knowing that she left left this behind for us to share with the children is even so awesome i'm, I'm so happy to be able to see see it here in writing and being able to you know all the stories that she has shared in there are stories that she shared with all of us to to be you know hearing it um, in the story it's just you know coming back in memories again so it's so awesome to see it in writing um i'd really like to thank you kim and helena and uh, everyone else that is um in joining us on facebook the schools especially you know thank you so sister mm -hmm. ruby each a while, CM, no CA, yeah. I tap the CM, no CA, yeah. Um, and there's the tomato lip, Tanita Nut, hot medicine, uh, E, uh, Penelicate, E, 
uh, Squamish. Um, I'd like to raise my hands up to the Royal B BC Museum for doing this work for our mother, um, Helena de Maris, for sitting down with our mother and listening to her story. I'd like to thank the Songhees people for allowing us to, to do this work on their territory with the Royal BC Museum up in Victoria. I'd like to thank the Cowichan people for supporting our mother through all the tasks that she took upon herself to succeed in providing an avenue for our people to be able to learn our language. Um, <clears throat> I'll finish my my Hulkamitan speech before I carry on. Siam na sieya, siam na selfwan, siam na um I'd like to say thank you to all the people that played a role with our mother. Um and speaking about her mother, I'm gonna share a little bit about the question you have. Um our mother was our leader. She was our matriarch. She led by example. She was so kind, respectful, caring, thoughtful. She was always sharing the teaching <laughs> with her children, her grandchildren, her great grandchildren, and the students that, that she taught, um, the whole community as a whole. Um, she lived her life to the fullest. She had a, she always had a routine. Every day she had a routine and it, it involved the language. Every day she slept it, she, she woke up to it. She, right until her last, the last few days of her life was about the language. She, when we're getting ready to leave the hospital, she was saying, oh, I can't wait to get back to work. You know, I'm, I'm call so-and-so, we're gonna get working right away. You know, she, she always uh, began her, her classes with a prayer, with a, a song or a prayer, or she always, she always encouraged the, the students that are coming up behind her to learn the prayer, to say the prayer, to sing, to learn the songs that are being created by, by the, the collective. We share the songs that, that we learn and that we create together as a group. Um, mom really <laughs> carried herself in such a way that was so humble, kind, and respectful. You know, I really, really appreciate what she, she taught all of us, you know, all her children on how to, how to carry on with what she started, how, how to stand up and hold each other up so we could all work together as a whole, you know, not just our family, but the groups that mom created. <laughs> My grandson's really talking. Um, yeah. My brother, if it's okay, if that he could share a few words. Please, hello Leo. Hello, I'd like to thank you ladies for all the work you did for our mother. I, I know we, we talk lots on all the travels that we've done and the places that you she went to. I don't think there's a time when she ever stopped learning and teaching. She, we'd be driving and she'd be saying, she'd think of a word that she, she couldn't think of before. And she'd be whipping out her book and trying to write it down so she doesn't forget it. I don't know how many times she's forgotten things and tried to tell me to remember it. And, my memory is just as good as hers, so we we we'd be looking at each other and remind me, remind me, and it never worked out for us. But we always had fun doing this, and I really appreciate you, ladies, for all the work that you did for our mother. And I know she's she's happy with what she accomplished. I don't think she stopped learning or teaching. Even when she was in a hospital, she worried more about her students than she did herself. And, uh, I used to uh, try to tell her she worried about Auntie Dolores, and I said, Mom, think about yourself, but she was trying to carry her sister around and, you know, 
she, she worried about people more than she worried about herself. She wanted everyone to be okay. And right to the end, she did the same thing all the way through. But I really raised my hands to you ladies for all the stuff that you did for our mother, the teachings that she gave us. It's a thing that we're gonna hang on to for the rest of our lives and teach our children, the babies we all will have here. And we, we've started teaching them already and explaining who they come from and where they come from, who we belong to. We always told them it wasn't for our mother. We all wouldn't be here, our grandmother. Thank you very much again. No. Hi, Chua. You want to share some words? You sure? Hi, Chua. Hi, Chua. I love hearing. I love hearing your grandson. Um, it just, you know, that connection to the next generation. It's it's very evident. In, in hearing him in the background. And thank you all for sharing something about your, your mother. Um, Sarah Kell, who's watching here on Zoom says she loved Ruby's laugh. Something mm. she's thinking of right now. Mm. Helena, when did you first meet Ruby? I first met Ruby in 1988 when I was working at uh, the College and Tribes Cultural Education Center, developing Hulkamitnam language for the primary grades and got to work a lot with the elders who were who were working down there all i guess all of them have passed away at this point and um it was a real privilege to be there and ruby was one of the first people that befriended me because you know there i was a, a non cowichan person working on on Hulkamitan language and understandably people were you know, not necessarily willing to to embrace me being there. And Ruby would come over and and share her, you know, her approach to language teaching. And she was such an experienced language teacher. And she would encourage me to try to practice Hulk Meetnam and always with humor, um, lots of lots of laughter. And later she, um, when I started teaching at Vancouver Island University, she often came to my class to share all oh, Hulk Meetnam stories or cultural teachings. She was so generous, generous with, with her time. And in 1997, Tom Hukari and I and, and Ruby applied for a grant from BC Heritage Trust to record her, her life story and over eight sessions, which were all more well over an hour. We recorded her, Ruby and I recorded her life history in, in English. And Tom did some of the recording in Hulkamitnam. And it was a privilege to listen to her. And also it seemed like a particular time in her life when she was reflecting, looking back, thinking about um, her children and her grandchildren and the legacy that she wanted to leave behind. And it, it's taken over 25 years before Ruby's book to be published. And I'm so glad that it did happen. And I'm so, so relieved that it did happen. We, we tried an earlier publisher and it, it didn't quite work out. And so this is just an honor to be uh, instrumental in taking taking her story forward. And I'm so glad that she trusted me and um, honored that she trusted me with her story to collaborate with her and with her family in preparing the manuscript to get the book ready for publication. Um, it's a privilege to be to be in that role. Mm. And um... You're speaking about getting this book ready for publication, and that's something you're you're trying to do for a pan during a pandemic, and and uh, there must have been some unique challenges with that as well. Yeah, there were lots of challenges. <laughs> there were lots of sleepless nights. Um, there was lots of encouragement from from Ruby's daughters, which I really appreciated, uh, and I I was reminded often of of Ruby's you know, teachings about setting goals and achieving them and, and you know, carrying, carrying forward. There were lots of deadlines and, and it was difficult to meet deadlines when we couldn't meet or when there were shifting protocols around COVID and um, 
normally I would have gone to her house and sat with her and, and worked on the book. And that wasn't possible because couldn't meet at her house. So we met at the language house in Duncan where the SFU Alchemy and Language Program is taught. And that was a safe place to, in terms of COVID, that was a large space where we could be, but it required lots of organization and um, arranging for her daughters to be there and for her transportation and not to be too, take too much time and, and tire, tire her out. So it had to be carefully planned and only every couple of weeks, sometimes we could work on the phone, um, but that wasn't always possible because some, her hearing um, mm. wasn't all that good. And also just other things, trying to make arrangements with institutions to release forms for photographs when everyone was working from home or um, our, the, the BC archives were closed, other institutions, museums, you know, were closed. So having access to certain documents was difficult. Um, but for instance, there was tremendous amount of support and collaboration from so many people. I, we have so many people to thank and we thank them in the book, uh, but I especially want to thank, you know, Ruby's children for, for supporting, um, supporting this work. And also Donna Gertz, the SFU linguist and Sally Hart, who, who manages the, the language house. There are many people who participated in, in the preparation of this. Four generations of, of Ruby's family participated in this. Two of my children contributed. It, it truly was a, a collaborative process in, in, many, in many ways and a very rewarding process. Wonderful. Well, Eve Rickert is our publisher here at the Royal BC Museum, and she's uh, watching on Zoom, and she says that she's so grateful that you chose the Royal BC Museum uh, to publish this important book. So thank you for that as well. Now, this is an, an oral history, um, so we get to hear Ruby's voice in this book. And um, happily, uh, the, our three guests here have all agreed to do a short reading for us so that we can hear Ruby's voice and what she has to say. So Molly, um, let's start with you. We'll have you unmute yourself and um, if you could give us a short reading. Okay, thank you. Um, so this is a reading from Mom's book. And so I'll start. By this time, it was 1950. I was getting a dollar an hour. I had quite a few places to go to, different places. 1951, I still had no baby and my mother was starting to worry. By summertime, she was asking, asking and worrying and telling me how, how hard it is to be without children. Then she started saying, well, I want to have a, I want to have a grandchild, grandchildren before I get too old. I want to see grandchildren. I want a lot of grandchildren. Then she started telling me, maybe you are, you are like me, the way I was. You aren't going to have any children unless you do something about it. This was the summertime already. Summertime in 1951. Yeah, then, then I finally agreed with her. I guess I, I always wanted to please my mother. I guess in a way I understood what she was saying. So she decided she was going to give me. <clears throat> okay. Want me to? Yeah. Okay. So she decided she was going to give me what was given to her by her aunt. And she brought me to this old lady that gave her those herbs to have children. So I met her. I can't remember her name, but we went for the herbs ourselves, tromping in the forest. And she said, I know where it is. Follow me. So I was following her around. This was this was the one. So we started picking them and she said, I don't remember which one is for the boy to have to have a boy. She asked me if it mattered. And I said, to me, a baby was a baby and I was willing to try. So this was in October and she says, okay, we'll just follow the directions of how to use it and when to use it. At what my aunt, at what, what my aunt and how she taught me, you'll take it just the same way. 
So I did exactly as she told me. She made me to drink, she said. A certain day you're going to, oh, a certain day you're going to have a drink, drink this. So, so that certain day came and then she said, well, you drink it, that's it. You just forget about it. Don't think about it. We'll just wait. Sister Ruby. We are, oh, there we go. Oh. We're not able to open the attachment for the document that was sent. Okay, I'll, con I'll continue reading for. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. And that was, that was it. That was what was said. Well, that's what she told me. So I drank it and then just put it away and out of my mind and not even think about it. But it worked right to the day, right to the day, July 3rd, and my baby was born. I got pregnant and I had my baby nine months later. Mm -hmm. I was still farming and for my dad at six months of being pregnant. The sisters and Father Leclerc were worried and stressed. I didn't go to the doctor why I wasn't conceiving. She was my mother, just decided I was like her. And it didn't matter to her it was if it was a girl or a boy. And it didn't matter to me whether it was a boy or a girl. But just that it was going to be a baby. That was all. Okay. okay. Where? Where? Right here. We. Oh, we just did that. She was so happy. She said, she said that I was getting a blessing with a girl. That girl was the most important that this this girl this this firstborn is going to be the mother hen of the future children that I was going to have she was going to be the mother hen of them because she was the oldest and it was true it was so true my daughter she was delicate and a little little thing delicate she was very strong or she was strong okay. yeah i think that's it just one page okay uh and who was that first was that you molly yes oh uh, how wonderful to hear that story <laughs> thank you for choosing that one and for sharing that with us it does make me want to, um, there was a question here in chat about um, seeing a picture. And I have a picture of the cover of the book. So let's see, uh, just a picture of your mom there uh, on the cover of her book, What Was Said to Me. This book comes out on June the 18th. It was lovely to see her and to hear that voice coming from, coming from you both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Little Ruby, I'm sorry you um, you didn't your reading couldn't come through. Do you want to say anything about what that reading um, makes you think of? Um, the the baby that was born was uh, the oldest sister of uh, our late sister Leona. Uh, so that that was the child that she had, the first child she had. No, it was a beautiful reading. Thank you, Molly, for reading for us. I just got Thank you. Now we're coming very close to the end of the amount of time that goes so quickly while we're here. I'm just looking uh, in the chat to see if there are any questions that are here in the chat. Um, Wendy Wickwire, um, who is here on Zoom, said uh, she's here in spirit and sends congratulations to all who are involved with the book. So lovely. Kevin Neal. Uh, Lori, who's watching on Zoom, says it looks and sounds like she's a determined lady and she's looking forward to reading the book. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well, before we go, would anybody like to say anything else before we uh, just wrap up today? I would like to say, you know, thank you so much, Kim, for hosting this and mm -hmm. giving, you know, each of our children an opportunity to to share and to be, you know, to be able to participate. And Helena for, you know, taking time to, 
finish what you started with our mother. You know, it, it's it's been such an honor to get to know you. And, you know, for many years, mom always talked, I have a lady helping me with the book, but she never, ever shared who. And I used to, we used to bug her and ask her, who's the lady mom? And she says, ah, sha, it's none of your business, Mana. You'll find out when the time comes. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until last year we had the honor of meeting Helena and, you know, with all of mom's children, her grandchildren and her great grandchildren really worked hard to get all of the pictures that mom wanted to, you know, wanted published in the book, mm -hmm. you know, so I really appreciate everyone who worked hard for her. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the goals she really wanted to achieve, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it's not for herself or her children, it's for the people, she said. Mm -hmm. So I, I really thank each and every one of you for participating and the viewers for, you know, taking time out of their day to, to be able to watch and listen and learn and to look forward to something that mom left, you know, she, she left a tremendous legacy for each of us. And it's just heartwarming, you know, it really brings my heart so warm with, with everything that's happening for our mother. It's, you know, it's a real true honor for each of us to participate and to be part of this. So I really want to thank you from, from our family to, mm -hmm. to be able to be part of it. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. My daughter has a couple of words to share. I just want to really thank you for hosting the webinar today. Hi and thank everybody for taking time out of their day to be here it's it's heartwarming as Andy had mentioned and heights eight class yeah thank you thank you for helping uh, make it work by hosting the zoom and logging us in and, and everything as well it really has just been my pleasure um I feel uh, I'm happy that we were able to make some space and it, it sounds like your mother meant a lot um, in your family and in your mm -hmm. community. And it is clear that her, her, her work and contribution is going to have an impact for so many generations um, to all of her students and people that she cared about and lifted up and brought forward. Thank you all so much for sharing. Um, and, and a link to the book uh, is being posted in the chat as well that is there. And oh, I have a comment here. Let me just see who, um, Carmen Rodriguez, who's watching from the University of Victoria says the language revitalization programs at UVic are successful because of Ruby, of your mm -hmm. mom. So that's beautiful. That's so true. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a comment, Kim, please. if I Yeah, please. can. Um, thank you, Kim, for, for hosting the webinar hosting the webinar today and also you think again, no, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead Helena oh okay um thank you Kim for hosting the webinar today and thank you for you know for Eve and um for supporting this publication through such a you know a challenging time because of COVID in preparing the book I try to think about how it could be used, and it can be used in so many ways. I think it's relevant for the family um, as a legacy and as, as a kind of a roadmap. It's, it's relevant for the community, but it's relevant beyond, beyond the community. I think it, has, um, it can be used in education, and I hope it will be used in education in the Cowichan, in the Cowichan Valley uh, at post-secondary as well as, as high school high school level as, you know, um, the importance of lived, lived experience and, and someone who, the story of someone who witnessed great social change and who despite hardships just succeeded and fulfilled, fulfilled her dreams. Um, it's an inspiration for, for all of us. And before I go, I just wanted to uh, thank Brian Tom who created three maps for the book called Ruby's Places, Ruby's Maps. And so that was a huge contribution. And uh, so thank you, Tom, as well. And thank you, everyone. Well, hi, Chika. Hi, Chika, everyone. Um, 
Thank you so much. If you if you joined us late or you missed something or you want to go back or share, this has been recorded and you will find it on the Royal BC Museum's YouTube channel. So please have a look there. The Royal BC Museum has reopened and our new feature exhibition, Orcas, Our Shared Future is on now. And if you live locally, we encourage you to find out more. If you don't uh, live locally, we have some virtual opportunities as well. Our next RBCM at Home will be on June 1st with Jenny Atkinson of the Whale Museum in Friday Harbor. And she's gonna help us learn about some of the different ecotypes of orcas who live in the Salish Sea. And until then, take care of yourselves and one another. Hi, Chika. Hi, Chika. Now, uh, before you go, I, I'd like to